Hello everyone, this is Splice and welcome to my gear stats guide video. This video is about what is the best gear to choose, what the best stats are to choose, what my stats are and why I chose them. And I will be trying my best to explain what every single stat means so you can make a good assumption for yourself as well. So that's what this video is about. Without further ado, let's get into it. So with my Lawbringer, uh, I'm going to start off with the uh, helmet of my stats so as you can see I have maxed out revenge mode duration and I've almost maxed out e exhaustion recovery I did not uh, level up debuff resistance at all because personally for me I do not find it very useful um, in comparison to the other two stats I have another maxed helm which is just a swap of the other two stats and I've been switching between these two for a little while and I've recently stopped at this one because revenge mode duration is pretty useful especially when you're getting ganged up on by more than two people when you're being ganged up on you want to have this revenge for a long amount of time because every time you shove someone you can knock them down when you parry someone you knock them down um, and the longer this is up for the more times you can knock people down and get free strong attacks on them the exhaustion recovery is nice, I liked it for a long time because, um, especially for the Lawbringer, you run out of uh, stamina quite a lot and you want to get back to the full stamina bar before uh, the, the enemy starts comboing you. Um, but I realized that the difference isn't that much in comparison to revenge mode duration which actually increases by like a good couple seconds which is very useful indeed. So that's what I choose for the helmet. The reason why I don't choose debuff resistance is because in comparison to revenge mode duration and exhaustion recovery I don't really need to resist any of the debuffs that much as they don't really make that much of a difference in the long run anyways and most of the time the enemies don't really debuff you they kind of just attack you with their physical attacks anyways or use um, damaging abilities not really debuff abilities so that's why I don't use that moving on to the armor I have ex execution health regen almost at max but my max is block damage and I have completely deleveled sprint speed for me personally I don't really mind chasing or running away from people it's not really a big problem for me if the enemy is running away and they're too far I don't bother trying to chase them throughout the whole map I simply just turn around and try to find my own strengths in the map and then I come and meet them later. If they do manage to get away from me, then I just have to accept it and I have to go and just turn around and either try to revive my teammates or get buffs for myself so we can have another fight when we meet up again. The reason why I max block damage is, uh, for those who don't know what that is, when an enemy is blocking and you use a strong attack on them, it shaves off damage. When you max out block damage, it does more damage. Uh, when they're blocking of course. So I max that out because a lot of the time the enemy is blocking my attacks so I want to make sure that I'm still doing consistent damage on them even when they're on the defensive. The reason why I didn't max execution health regen though is because well I don't execute a lot and especially when you're being ganged up on you won't really have the time to execute the enemy. However near max execution health regen is very useful because when I kill an enemy in a solo fight, and he did a significant amount of damage to me, I can almost regen my whole HP bar, which is very useful because then I don't have to worry about going for health, especially when there's another enemy coming really close by and I execute that enemy, then I'll be ready for the next fight that happens. So that's my choice on the chest piece. Next we're moving to the arms. I have maxed out block damage resistance, and I've uh, almost maxed out stamina regen, and I've completely... Uh, reduced my level of revive speed. Uh, now this one is a bit tricky. Um, I maxed out block damage resistance because again I get ganged up a lot in deathmatch and that's the game mode I play the most. I, I play that more than Dominion by a good amount. I'd say 80% more games are played in deathmatch. Personally I enjoy that game mode more and in that game mode you'll find yourself getting ganged up a lot uh, by enemies. So block damage resistance is very useful for me in my opinion just for the state that I'm in Because when I get ganged up on there's a lot of strong attacks happening to me So I want to be able to resist all the block damage shaving so I could take as many hits as possible I'm trying to tank down and take the hits and survive as long as I can the reason why I uh, Don't have revive speed maxed out is because if you're gonna have revive speed maxed out You want to put it in conjunction with sprint speed 
because you if you're gonna make a sprint speed revive build that's what you got to go for and i'm not i chose not to do that because um well first of all if i max out revive speed then i can get my teammates up faster but if i'm getting ganged up on the chance of me reviving a teammate is uh next to none even if i did have max revive speed um and i near max stamina regen um, well, for the obvious reason that stamina regen is very useful when you're using strong attacks constantly as a lawbringer. Lawbringers use up a lot of stamina per hit and on their combos use up almost all their stamina all the time. So you want to keep making sure that you have your stamina regen. I have another maxed arm piece which uh, swaps the two block damage resistance and stamina regen. I have messed around with both of these for a while and I just find, find that block damage resistance is just a little bit better because when you get ganged up on. The chance of you um, having revenge most of the time is like a really great chance. You're going to be in revenge a lot of the time, so you don't really need to worry about the stamina regen as much. Block damage resistance just comes in an all-around um, situation where you can always block your damage, so it's very useful. I'm going to skip the axe heads for a while, and I'm going to move on to the shaft. Uh, so, with the shaft, I have zero feet cooldown reduction. I have max revenge mode defense and almost max revenge gain by defense. And I'm gonna say this right now that um, nine times out of 10, you're gonna to wanna to make a revenge build in um, for your character. Revenge builds is definitely the meta. It's definitely what is considered the best. Um, and I know my, a lot of people are saying that uh, revenge is super, super powerful to the point where it could be broken. Um, but you also got to keep in mind that if other people also have max stat builds and they understand that the enemy um, When you're attacking with more than one person that they get revenge quicker like all these things if, if people start factoring this stuff in It's going to balance out a little bit more than it is right now because people are sort of just not really understanding the game And uh, that's to be uh, that's to be expected because the game's only been out for a few weeks so uh, the reason why I max out revenge mode defense over revenge gain is because um, if you guys do not know, when there is more than one person attacking you, um, you get re your revenge gain a lot quicker. It's, it's, it's not just the hit that gets you more consistent amount of revenge gain, but you actually get bigger chunks of revenge gain when more people are hitting you. It's uh, pretty crazy, and I get revenge gain, like, I get a revenge immediately when I get ganged up on. So I don't really need to get more revenge gain by that little margin. I did have this other shaft that I did mess around with a, a little bit, but I overall just thought the revenge mode defense is just the way to go because I want to be able to tank as many hits as possible when I'm in revenge. And the reason why feet cooldown reduction is at zero, uh, especially in deathmatch, like this could this could actually be changed up a bit if you want to change it up. Um, but for Dominion, uh, might be possible to change this up for feet cooldown reduction. But in deathmatch, every single round you get your feats back, so there isn't really a point. Uh, the chance of you using up all your feats in one round and then needing to recharge them is uh, pretty low, the chance of that happening, so I just didn't bother with it. Moving on to the pole arm, the spike at the top. This is, um, this is a bit questionable. So I maxed out revenge mode attack, near maxed out revenge gain by injury, and I have zero throw distance. Uh, you might be thinking, you're a Lawbringer, your throw distance is uh, important, is it not? And it is, but it also is not. Um, but I'll get into that later, but first I'm going to say that Revenge Mode Attack um, and Revenge Gain by Injury, you can switch out the two. I don't have a personal preference, um, well, I, I do have a personal preference, but um, I don't have... Um, a really biased opinion on it, I should say. But the reason why I chose Revenge Mode Attack is, again, I get revenge really, really quickly, so I don't really need to worry about the gain. Um, but for those who are most of the time in 1v1s a lot of the time, Revenge Gain, maxing out the Revenge Gain by both of these is recommended if you're going to do 1v1s a lot of the time. But when you get ganged up on, getting revenge is really, really quick, so you don't really need to worry about that. So that's why I maxed out Revenge Mode Attack. The reason why I didn't max out throw distance is for the reason that when you are being 2v1, 3v1, 4v1, the chance of you being able to grab and throw someone is very low. 
because most of the time you're going to be on the defensive um, blocking attacks waiting for revenge and then when you pop revenge you're going to be attacking people you're not really going to be grabbing them and the other thing too is that throw distance doesn't um, doesn't change the effect of the impaling uh, effect of the lawbringer when you impale the enemy and drag them across the map throw distance does not affect that throw distance only affects when you grab and throw someone against a wall or something like when you actually throw the person so I don't really find much value to it it is useful in some aspects but for the most part I don't really find value to it so that's why I did not choose it and for the final piece we're going on to the axe heads now you see immediately that I have four and the reason why I have that is uh, because I wanted to test out every single different type of uh, build I could um, so the first one which is currently my main one is I have zero attack I have max defense and near max stamina cost redu reduction this might look a little crazy you might think that zero attack you must do no damage uh, you there's no way you could beat people especially a 1v4 if you have zero attack uh, and the answer is that's actually false um, with even though I have zero attack like this in conjunction with this revenge mode attack being at max when I'm in revenge mode I can do a significant amount of damage to people especially when I knock them down when people get knocked down you do extra damage as you would know but a top heavy on a knockdown person can easily take over the ha half their HP it's pretty crazy so I figured that out and I just decided to go for max defense and people might be thinking that defense is only when you block right and the act the answer is no. Defense is just general defense. When you're taking hits, or when you're blocking damage, or when you're taking damage from feats, all of this comes in conjunction to each other, and defense at max reduces the damage significantly against a lot of enemy attacks. This is um, my most recommended for stat-wise when it comes to any item. Getting max defense is my recommended because being able to tank a lot of hits and staying alive gives you just that extra bit of edge to be able to throw that extra little bit of retaliation that might throw the game and get you that win. I've been at max attack before over here. Oh, I don't even have a max attack. <laughs> My bad. So uh, the other one that I did a lot was a near max attack and max stamina cost reduction item. This was pretty decent. But what I noticed is that even though I had zero attack, compared to this one who has near max attack, I was only doing almost, I was doing a little bit more than an extra half of a bar. And that is pretty nice damage, but in the long run, if you're not doing a 1v1, it doesn't really add that much. So I decided to go for max defense. Oh yeah, also when I had zero defense, I was taking a lot of hits very easily and I was dying really easily. So as soon as I changed to max defense, I was able to stay in fights a lot longer and rely on a lot of other abilities to keep me alive. I also have this other one that this one is a bit uh, odd. So near max attack and max defense with no stamina cost reduction is very, very, um, up and down it's not really a consistent good axe to use this one I would not recommend using for the average player but for those who really know how to keep your stamina at bay and to manage your your stamina well this could be very very powerful uh, especially in 1v4s because when you're revenge you don't need to really worry about stamina cost reduction so if you're work if you're focusing on just mainly revenge then this could be very good for you guys but um when you're in a 1v1 you'll find yourself running out of stamina in just two hits it's kind of crazy but you do a good amount of damage and you can take a lot of hits so this build using this axe i've used it quite a bit it can help but for the most part it doesn't really work out when you're doing 1v1s in the beginning of an elimination uh it could work well for dominion um if you're going to be a B the whole time and just keep taking out minions or something like that. But I don't know if I would recommend this, but it is pretty interesting. So if you guys want to try it out, there's the option. The other axe I have is near max defense and max stamina cost reduction. This is These are the two that I switched between the most. 
because they're the two of the same most most likely and i've decided to go for max defense over stamina cost reduction because even if you're not getting ganged up on and you're in a 1v1 the extra bit of defense adds that much more especially when the enemy is maxing out their attack you want to be able to counter that with defense if you don't have max defense and or if you just have zero defense and they have max attack you're going to be taking a whole lot more damage like probably a whole extra bar of damage if they do a strong attack on you so being able to counter that with defense puts it back on a level stage of damage and then when you revenge you have revenge defense as well that adds to that as well so you're able to tank a lot of damage and being able to stay alive for a long amount of time this is my tank build is what i would call it being able to tank so many hits and stay alive gives you a time gives you the amount of time to think um Think strategically about the fight that you're in and being able to retaliate wait for them to slip up and take them down of course this might not always work you can still get easily destroyed in 1v4s 1v3s even 1v2s but it does make a huge difference when you max out defense in comparison to maxing out attack this build is built for taking on more than one person at a time this is the build that I chose and this is what I think is the best for my character. With that being said, thank you guys for watching this guide. Hope you did learn something and with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.